What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and a holla ballers to you all. We're back in Baldur's Gate 3, and we are pushing through, and I feel we're, like, about to head into Act 2. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> not going to be as bad today, right? It's not going to be as bad. First thing I wanted to do is, after all the gameplay we've done recently, is fully respect Karlak to a wizard. I wanted a straight-up mage-style caster. I was really torn. I was browsing through some of the other specs um, that looked interesting, but... Full wizard is how we're going. I want that caster. Karlak suits best for this. I know people are going to be really upset because Karlak's a barbarian. It's like, I'm a barbarian. Karlak can be a wizard. He's awesome. Great character. Going to be there. So my game plan today was to do some mopping up. Uh, bits of things that I just haven't finished before we potentially move on. I do remember in Divinity, sometimes when you changed acts, it was like, well, you can't do anything in Act 1 anymore. Or you, if you move to Act 3, you can't do anything in Act 2 anymore. Uh, and I was worried about that. So first things first, went back to the spider lair. Um, boss was not hard now. A couple of levels makes a massive difference in D&D. I didn't uh, really remember how strong levels are in this game. Like, every time you get a level, you're, like, vastly more powerful than you were before. Uh, it's actually pretty crazy. But, so the fight was not great. Beat it very easily. But what was impressive, actually, and I forgot about this, is I found a, a gem on the floor uh, for Asterion that allows me to read the book. Uh, the Book of Thay that I've had in my inventory for so goddamn long uh, and gave it a go. And I got so lucky here on my dice rolls. It's crazy. I managed to get through all of the books, uh, the pages I was allowed to and passively learn Speak to the Dead. Thank God. I don't know what it is, but I can't play and I uh, the, the game without having Speak with Animals and Speak with the Dead passively. Like, even though there's potions and stuff and scrolls and stuff in the game, I can't do it. I just need them on my characters. I don't want to worry about it. I want to talk to as many characters as I can and get good information. Uh, so I need I needed it in my life. Like at one point I'm going to, like I think it's today. I can't remember the exact day I did it. Uh, but I had the option to add a ritual and one of them was speak to animals to one of the characters even though they were clearly objectively better salute, better, I, just, I was like, I don't care. I'm taking it. Uh, job done. Uh, that's the way it's going to be. After that, I had, like, the Master Forge that I found earlier on and some Bark that I found in the Underdark to make weapons, which were not really great for me anymore. Uh, and the other thing I had to do was find the Adamantine Forge. Okay. Adamantine Forge. I knew it was somewhere in the Grim Forge, right? Makes sense. It's somewhere down there. But I'd explored the hell out of that place. This took me... longer than it should have. And if the only reason... I would say this maybe took me two hours to find out how to get to it. And that's... Be and the only reason that I knew that it was there is that my camera randomly showed me an area I could clearly walk around and it had loot in it. Uh, hidden behind the area where we'd had the Grimforge Massacre. Finding how to get to it, I, I tried everything. I spun my camera all over the place and was walking around until I was looking around the area for different ladders, staircases, whatever... And just managed to glimpse in the corner of my eye a an overhead uh, metal grating that was clearly a, 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 like a, a bridge that was above me. This got messy because what I, the only thing I could do was to misty step a character up there, at least that I could find, and then try and work backwards to find how to get everybody else up uh, at some point. Uh, I did manage to do it eventually and got my whole team up there and work the levers because it's a bit of a lever puzzle system because I only found this out 40 minutes after doing this and yes, everybody was laughing at me who was watching this because they, I, I pointed out before, my stream is adamant that it will not help me in any way, shape or form because they find it funny is that you can shoot levers with arrows. I didn't know that. So I had one person stationed over here, one person stationed over and they kept having to move them backwards and forwards until I clicked it and uh, Asterion shot an arrow at it. And it... Uh, <laughs> ah! God damn it. God damn it. But I got to the forge. That's what matters. <laughs> I got to the forge, uh, which was really cool. Uh, and down at the bottom is uh, one of the bigger gimmicky boss fights. When this boss spawned, it had 400 HP, which is easily probably four times as much as I've seen on anything. Clearly, it's got a gimmick. It had a gimmick called Superheated. Where you could only damage it if it had recently been burned with lava. Uh, I'd been finding all these molds to craft a weapon in there. I, I had one go at this which wiped me. Where I did a lot of damage to it. But I just couldn't keep up with its outgoing damage. I could It was AoEing. I did manage to... I was kite, so my plan was... is It had a mechanic where the last person that hits it has aggro on it. 
So what I would do is hit it with the three I wanted and then have the last person hit it who was positioned in a way that it would walk through the lava to get to them. And then I would have somebody else do that on the next turn so it would walk back through the lava and keep the superheated buff was my general idea. Because that's kind of like the World of Warcraft Final Fantasy XIV approach to something like this is to kite the enemy through the vulnerability pool so that it's constantly got it, right? Uh, that's not the case. Uh, I mean, you can do that, I'm sure. And you can make it happen because you can set up opportunity attacks and get loads of extra attacks on it to get that HP down. It then dawned on me, there's probably a gimmick to this. It's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. It does seem unreasonable. And then, of course, wait, there's a giant forging hammer that drops from the middle of the room. I was like, can we just hit it with the hammer? Yeah, you can. <laughs> and it literally doesn't do anything. It never gets off the floor. And it takes over 100 HP off it every single time. And the, the boss just lies there while you pummel it into the ground constantly. Uh, so I did that and killed it on the second go. Uh, well, just having someone just pull the lever over and over again and kill some little lads that come with. So it was fun, though. It was very intimidating to have that mon monolithic creature come pouring out of the uh, uh, the vent there. And obviously, I got to make myself some nice weapons, uh, which was fantastic. That was really, really cool. I then noticed, though, while I was walking around, is there was a totally another area to this. There's a big temple down there, a huge temple, and there's a broken bridge and this is where the game mechanics kind of come to odds with what the, the the devs want you to do. Is that you can clearly see that in any other area of the game, you would be able to jump or misty step to this location um, via the broken bridge. But it won't let you. It says chasm. It's like you can't go there. And I'm like, well, that's really weird because I should be able to get there. And I was looking for angles. I'll admit I spent probably 40 minutes. So try and picture, for those of you catching up on YouTube, 40 minutes of me wandering around trying to figure out how to get to this temple with thousands of people Pepe laughing at me. Where ultimately I did the ultimate sin, kind of, but I do invoke this right whenever possible. Is Guys, to not make this stream really boring and frustrating, can you get to here now? And the answer was no, you can't. We've just been laughing at you the whole time. Which is fun in some regards, but you don't want it to go on too long, otherwise it's a really boring viewing experience. It's like, okay, I've been gone for an hour, come back, he's still looking for this place, and he can't even get there. Uh, so, it was time to go to the Mountain Pass. The Mountain Pass was an area that I had previously tried to go to, but the game said you uh, at your level, you'll find this bitterly difficult, and it also warns you, it's like, anything you need to do, you should do now. But as far as I know, I've done everything I can do in that act. Of course, that means I've missed only 8 billion things that I could do, especially if I'd left gale in the team or not killed lazy you know those kind of things but it is what it is uh it is what it is uh in the mountain pass though i found a really angry bird it upset some eagles uh i wasn't sure who to trust here maybe the birds are jerk maybe the eagles are a jerk i don't know uh but we did come across a huge temple of githyanki crash uh which was full of really interesting uh puzzles uh to do Lots of exploring here for weapons uh, to activate some sort of machinery and the bloodstone and all this kind of stuff was really cool. Uh, I did find the eagles uh, and there was a machine behind them that I wanted to talk to. I spoke to the eagles. Now, don't judge me, okay? Again, in best of intentions, man. I, I told the eagles that I had meant no harm. I'm just looking around and they said fine. And as I walked past them, they all aggroed me including the baby so they're dead now <sighs> they're dead now. <clears throat> pretty bad but it gets worse from there so Volo the bard has joined my camp and I've been dying not to talk to him because his character is obviously obnoxious in many ways and um, I was like, okay, we're back at the camp. Let's let's get this out of the way. Follow says he's a doctor. I think he's a bard doctor. And says he does know how to get the worm out of my head. So I let him. And his it got so funny that I had to keep rolling with it. <laughs> As he got an ice pick out. And told me to lean back and hold onto my butt and hammered an ice pick into my eye socket. At the time, I was thinking, this is kind of fun in some ways, is I'll be like one eye, maybe I'll get a patch or something. But he did absolutely remove my eye uh, and blinded me. 
uh, with the, one of the grossest cutscenes of all time. Uh, warning <laughs> about that. Um, afterwards, though, it kind of worked out in my favor. He gave me a fake eye that he had lying around, which gave me the ability to see invisible creatures passively. Awesome. Super good. And then ran away so I don't have to deal with him either. That's a double win in my book, guys. That's a super, super win. So frigging good. And then it got even better as we went down into the crash and we found this underground, like, gith area. Uh, and this re researcher was like, oh, I study the worms. Let me help you. <laughs> Uh, let me help you. And I sat in this machine uh, where, with the power of the Emperor, I completely destroyed the machine and ruined uh, this very expensive machine of hers. So I still have a worm brain. No solution on that so far as I keep feeding my brain more and more worms. Uh, and the researcher ran away. So I stole all her worms and stuck them into my brain uh, as they came back and, fight and fought me. Thankfully, though, even though I murdered all those people... Um, it didn't seem to cause a problem for the rest of the gith in the uh, crash. They were fine with it. <laughs> they were fine with it. I was asked by someone outside the crash uh, to steal a baby gith egg and turn it in for research purposes. I didn't agree with that, so I murdered her. Uh, and I did have the opportunity to steal the egg, which I didn't. I, I was actually more concerned. Genuinely, I'm not making this up. I was more concerned that I would aggro every single gith in there and have to kill them all. And then I would be forced to probably take the egg, because if I left the egg, the egg would die. And then I would have a baby gith egg. Thankfully, though, killing the researcher and her soldiers did not lead to that. As it didn't with ne the next and easily the most difficult fight of the game so far, which was fighting the gith boss. Um... This was very nasty. I think I had to reload this. Uh, not reload, but wipe and go again five times here. Even using everything I could. The actual problem was um, the door opening. And occasionally it would spawn two enemies in there. That Those on top of everything else that was going on there. With the giant bear wolves uh, that she's got with her. The giant wolves that she's got with her. Made it just super difficult. Because the archers, for whatever reason, just do like 40 damage. And I have 60 HP. <laughs> like, it was just... It was dumb. It was really dumb. I did manage to beat it by keeping out of line of sight of the door. Even if I closed the door, someone would run in and open the door uh, on occasion. So it was a little tricky. I had to just maneuver my characters away from the door so they wouldn't get seen. And after I won the fight, they actually despawned. And interestingly enough, almost the exact repeat of that fight happens next in the next room. Uh, but it was significantly easier because I'd just been through a similar sort of fight. So I knew the priority targets and things and didn't have much of a problem with this one comparatively. But I then got to meet the queen of the gith, the god Vlakith, I think she's called, who is like Snoke. I got snoked, appears over the top of me and wants me to go in to see the rat and kill the rat. At first, I told her to screw off and go kill herself. Um, this kind of sucks because she one-shot me and wiped me. Which means I can't take that option. Although that is what I would choose and have to deal with the consequences. But I can't do that. And so I uh, had to kind of tell her to screw off but not go kill herself or whatever. The final thing that would push her over the edge. Where I've now got a portal to go inside the artifact that uh, Shadowheart's been carrying around for so long and see the rat. At the same time, I found another pathway that continues on throughout this underground temple. And it's kind of tough to decide what to do. Uh, because I have choices. Do I go this way? Do I go that way? And that's where I'm going to leave you today because I don't want to kill the rat, I don't think. And I think if I go into this portal, I'm going to have to kill the rat. But there's also this other option to go down here with this blood of Lathander that I've been working on throughout the crash in the temple to see what's down there. So I have two roads in front of me and I'm really not sure if I should take one of them or not. I haven't decided yet. But that's where I'm going to stop for today. A lot of brutal fights. The gameplay is really heating up now and more and more choices are just presenting themselves to me every single step of the way. And I now feel like we're getting to the stage where characters we've seen earlier on are going to start reappearing. It feels like that kind of time. But tune in next time, man, and we'll see which road we take here. The uh, Rat Boy or the Blood of Lathander. I haven't decided. I guess.